yeah, I agree. I here. believe oh, that that would be an extreme yeah. minority, actually. Yeah, I think most people don't eat meat because so, of the torturing of animals. Yeah. Right. If nothing so, dies, if, if so, if so, vegans would. Right. So vegans would eat meat if the animal didn't suffer. Right. Not necessarily. Uh, I think it has to do with the thing having to die. I think that's well, the part. Not so much even the suffering. Is that, when death. people talk about lab meat, they're talking about like well, making told a stretch it was the of muscle on its own with if no they died, nerve like, really happy, or personality. Happy, or, well, like, you see, you see now I'm confused. I'm now I'm well, confused. I'm I was vegan, told though. it was about the suffering, and it's now it's not about the suffering. And that's really weird. Well, let Billy speak. I'm just trying to talk. Billy's the only vegan here. No, I know, I know. I think Billy should have some Brenda. Look, I think I'm the only vegan in the world. Look, I can't. The thing is, right? Like, different vegans are gonna have different views. Some might say that it's wrong to eat meat in any circumstances. Some say it's wrong to eat meat, but there might be some exceptions, like in a survival situation or some other situation. I mean, like when you make these sweeping claims, it's just gonna. There's gonna be. You won't give yourself up to make a claim, right? Like I didn't. I didn't oh, make a it's claim. Wrong. Sure, I, didn't, I literally claims, didn't make a claim. Why are you saying I made a claim? I didn't. Okay, fine. But when you make these sweeping... You're asking you mean okay? Claim. That, okay, that fine. All right, I misrepresented you. Oh, okay, I'll just pass over that. No, it's, no look. What the look, fuck? Let me finish. Look, just what do you mean let you finish? finish? Why should I let you finish? It's okay, fine. Right? It's okay, fine. What? Why are you being so confident? I want to know, I don't care about vegans who have a different point of view. I want to know if vegans who are opposed to animal suffering would eat meat if the animal doesn't, doesn't suffer. It depends. How fucking hard is that to answer? It depends. Look for what do you mean it depends? How, what does that mean? I'm Holy shit. Kind of you gotta let Billy, Billy answer. Billy, you're really quiet though. It's hard to hear you. Sorry, I'm on the train. On the um, train. can you hear me? Yeah. No, not really. Can you just talk louder? Is it is it too difficult? Um, I can talk. I can louder. hear him. Look, I can hear him. The point. The point. Look, the point is this, right? Um, if you make this sort of um, and I'm not saying you're saying this, but if you make this sort of sweeping claim that says. Vegans are opposed to eating animals that have suffered. Right? That that's just going to open to counterexamples. For example, I might see like a dead animal on the side of the road, and maybe that animal died and suffered. But I don't see like as a vegan, I don't have any moral qualms with like eating that animal. It's already dead. I didn't kill it. Um, it's just going to rot in the ground. So I didn't have a like any moral qualms with eating that animal. I I probably wouldn't because it's kind of gross. But I wouldn't have any moral qualms. So this, like, now some vegans might, but um, I think a lot of vegans might not. So right, I understand. Yeah, I think I understand. Like, I think I understand. Let me try to sit, repeat it back to you. You have no problems eating meat if the animal didn't suffer, right? And you're you're putting in the case of the animal no, was is roadkill. No, I didn't. Is roadkill? It it did. Thought you just did no i didn't say that that i might have moral qualms with um eating meat even if the animal didn't suffer for example let's say an animal uh you know is killed in a factory farm and that animal te didn't actually happen to suffer right it actually had a an okay life and when it was killed it was killed you know the bolt gun actually went through the brain in such a way that it died instantly and it actually didn't suffer but I still would have a moral qualm with going to the store and buying that particular meat because I'm um, giving money to an industry which, you know, kills and tortures animals. So, again, like the sweeping claim or the, the sweeping generalization. That I didn't make any claims. Okay. Why, why do you keep just, misrepresenting just me? Just one second. Well, then stop just misrepresenting my position. Just let me just let me finish what I'm saying. The sweeping idea that like. All big uh, that vegans are okay with eating meat as long as the animal didn't suffer. Well, I just gave you one counter example to that, so it's not true. Um, and like you might be a vegan and a particularist, so I mean, these general principles are going to turn out to be almost always false. Um, 
Right. So you, there really isn't any reason. It's, it's I, I can't, there's no reason. Um, I, I thought that vegans generally moral or ethical eat me vegans eat meat because they are opposed to the animal suffering. That's what I always thought. And well, now you tell me it's not about well, the animal suffering. And, and you say it's, it's really about, I didn't say that either. But you said it was about giving money to the factory farms or something like that. So it's not about the no, fact, it's not about the suffering. It's it about, about the institution. It could be about both. It could be about both. Like, but you don't I have a problem, but you don't have an good. objection to eating meat that would be your like roadkill that you'd found dead. No, right? I, in most cases, no, no, I wouldn't have a, a moral problem right. eating roadkill. So, so a cow comes up to you, comes up to the, comes up to the killing floor and it's, it's perfectly alive. It drops over dead. Right. And then, then they slaughter it. They don't have to kill it. They never killed it. It dropped, it died of natural causes. Would you eat that meat? Uh, I wouldn't have a moral qualm with it. See that now, now I'm just totally confused. I have no idea What's what, confusing? Print, see, they see seem to be just ad hoc all you have are a conglomeration of ad hoc ideas no there's nothing ad hoc about what i'm doing look it I'm sure as hell seems like it there's I cases where i think he's saying i think he's saying you wouldn't have a problem with someone myself. else eating speak, it. just one sec i can speak for myself look the point I is don't think that i don't have some uh general like sweeping principle right um I mean, I don't have any. No, right. They're ad hoc. That's, sorry. that's, that's the sec. principle. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Look, I don't have a general principle that I'm, I'm going on. Right. I mean, I, I'm generally a rule utilitarian, but I haven't thought too much about normative ethics. I, I have some, uh, general principles I hold to in most cases, oh, okay. but I don't have any. Well, what's the rule then? If like you're a rule utilitarian, what's the rule here? Well, in most cases, I, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess ahead of time. There is no fucking rule. There's no fucking rule at all. Is there? Um, no, I didn't say that. Um, a rule utilitarian will generally take the option, which in most cases is going to cause uh, the least amount of suffering. For example, um, killing like like this example of like killing an innocent person and then harvesting their organs, right? That's causing suffering to that person. But in the case where, you know, killing one innocent person and harvesting their organs saves five lives, right? A rule utilitarian is going to say that's immoral, even though in that particular case, it actually does lead to more, or sorry, it does lead to less suffering. Um, yeah. Whereas you're not really a you're, you're not really sorry, a you're sorry, sorry, rule sorry, sorry, utilitarian sorry, at that point, sorry, are you? Sorry, sorry, sorry. An act utilitarian is going to say that that action is um, is moral because in that particular instance it leads to less suffering, right? So there is a distinction between a rule utilitarian and an act utilitarian. I'm more of a rule utilitarian, um, except when you're not. Yeah, I mean there might be there might yeah, be some yeah. ideas, and I I amend my views Ed i'm Hawk. not a moral realist i don't think there's any um, yeah it's just it's just bullshit it's just principle. bullshit all of it's these bullshit. rules and principles you have are just bullshit they're just bullshit you just do whatever you think <laughs> what? is right that's well, yeah, all obviously i think that's what yeah, it's just bullshit Wait, who, who, who no does not that? everybody does that not everybody does that what are you talking about what the fuck everyone does what they want to do i think i hold no that. they don't well you think so what <laughs> they don't what the they, fuck? they don't do what they think is right and they also don't do what they want to do what what do they do then people often suppress what they want to do it, they often do they not do the things it. they want to do do they want to suppress it Ooh. so i still don't understand <laughs> more you didn't what? answer that. What is it? You, 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 you think that was you think that was a gotcha? Yeah, that was childish. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do think it's not. I mean, look. Let's let's say, say, it's not. Say, look. It's let's fucking say childish. I have, look. Well, there's competing say, desires, look, right? Yeah, they're competing desires. You take the best. You take the one that you have the strongest feeling towards. For example, I might 
desire to watch a movie, but I also have a greater desire to get fit. And so I decide to go to the gym rather than watch a movie. So you might say, oh, I did what I didn't want to do. But no, I did what I wanted to do because I had a greater desire to get fit than to watch uh, a movie. So I'm my position is people go according to their greatest desire. And in certain cases, there's going to be no principle by um, which determines a person's greatest desire. Yeah. In the case of eating roadkill, and look, I'll, I'll just explain. In the case of eating roadkill, I don't have a moral qualm with eating roadkill. Yeah. In the case, in the case of an animal just dropping dead of its own accord, and then people hacking up the body and eating it, I don't have a moral qualm with it. Uh, systematically, yeah, systematically killing cats and uh, yeah. breeding cats breeding and systematically cats. killing them for food, I do have a moral qualm. Uh, oh, same with pigs, same with fish, same with pigs, same with any other animals. Um, I do have a moral qualm. Based on what? I don't like it. So then don't fucking call yourself a rule utilitarian. Holy shit. I, you're, not, you're nothing I like that. a rule utilitarian. I said don't I'm call yourself really that. I said I'm mostly... You're not even close. You're not even close. No, I think my values mostly line up with... You don't have any values. You just do whatever you I want do. to at the time. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's what everyone does. But No, values... that's not what everybody... Not everybody just does that. No, they don't. Some people have rules that they obey, and they obey those rules even when they don't want to, even when in, when it is not their desire. Yeah, I, I disagree. What do you mean you disagree? It's just, it's just an yeah, empirical people, fact that there are people who, who observe rules and follow those rules even when it is not their desire to follow those rules. Do they have the desire to not follow that rule? But that, that's, you're kicking it up a level, right? Look, yeah. people follow their greatest yeah. desire. That's just, that seems to be true. If well, they have a desire and they don't follow through with that desire, then they had a desire to not follow through with that desire in the case of going to the gym rather than watching a movie. You had a desire to watch a movie. You had a greater desire to go to the gym. People uh, follow that greatest desire um, to go to the to go to the gym. Uh, um, well, people go to the gym that. even when they don't feel like feel like it, right? Then why do they go to the gym? Um, they don't feel they don't feel like it, but they go because they have a rule. They have a desire. Do they ha they have a rule? Yeah, they have a rule. I go to the gym every Thursday. Do they have a desire to follow that rule? Um, yeah, it's a rule that they've set them. For themselves and that they've committed to. Do they have a desire to follow that rule? Um, yeah, I think so. Right. So they're following their desire to follow that rule. No, but they're ignoring they're ignoring their other desires. Yeah, which is less is less strong than the desire to follow that rule. No, they follow the rule even when they don't want to. What? Wait, so they yeah. don't have a desire to follow that rule? So when I use the sentence, uh, John went to the gym, even though he did not want to, that's a perfectly acceptable English sentence. And everybody yeah, understands yeah. that. Everybody understands that, except for you. So maybe maybe you should ponder, maybe you should ponder that English sentence, ponder that, and think about what kind of well, mental state somebody has so what kind of mental state somebody has who goes to the gym when they don't want to? What what would that what would well, that look like? What would that feel like? Right? Well, and then and then just apply that to yourself. Look, I have to go in five minutes, but this gets into philosophy of language. For example, if I say to you Ecology, um, actually. Do you know the, just one sec. Um, if I say, um, do you know what the time is? And someone responds with um uh one thirty. Well, that's not explicitly an answer to the question. It's a yes or no question. Do you know what the time is? It's a yes or it's a no. So technically, I mean, they're implicitly answering the question, but they're not explicitly asking, answering the question. So um, 
if someone asks do you know what the yeah, time is and i say just one second just let me finish only only, only asks, people who are like finish. autistic just let me finish just think let that me that's finish. a problem just let me finish well you didn't have any trouble just traipsing let, over just, my sentences just a minute ago yeah that's true i'm sorry yeah that's true um, yeah so i i don't have problem traipsing over yours either then you know fuck you if you're going to talk okay, over okay. me then you're going you're going to get it back uh, okay. you know file this away File this away for future reference. If you talk over me, then when you start bitching like a little, like a little bitch about the fact that, um, you know, I'm interrupting you, then I'm interrupting you, then, then, then you can just, you can just shove it. You can just shove it. Like the madman wants you to be civil. Okay. What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, look. Um, yeah, example, don't bitch. Don't bitch about being overtalked when you overtalk other people. Don't fucking bitch about it. You got it? Do you got it? Does it register in your tiny little brain? Yes, it registers in my tiny little brain. I was being there. So now start acting like a fucking adult. What the fuck okay, is wrong with so you? I'll, I'll finish. I'll finish uh -huh. my sentence. So look. If I expect people to stop to not interrupt me. I do not get to talk. I do not get to finish a fucking sentence, but he. You're way too hot. Literally, from the very start of this conversation with Billy, you were like unbelievably hostile. Like, what's going well, on? Well, why should I care? Why should I care what you think? I don't give a fuck what you think. Why are you in such a bad I have to leave soon. I have to leave soon. Okay, let uh, Billy make his closing remarks. Yeah, so look, the point is. Um, and I, I've forgotten where how this links back, but I'll just finish what I was going to say. So if I ask, do you know what the time is? And someone responds with yes, and then walks away. Well, they're going to think they're like kind of rude. But the fact of the matter is they technically answered the question. Ironically, kind of better than somebody who gave them uh, the, uh, the, um, the answer, yeah, the time is 1.30, right? That's technically kind of not an answer, although it is implicitly, like you can derive that they know the time by giving the time. But the point is that, and this is, goes to the philosophy of language, um, there's some lectures by John Searle on this, um, that when somebody asks the question, do you know what the time is? What they're actually asking, it, 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 they're not asking technically a question, it's more of a command disguised as a question, which is, give me the time, right? So when people use the term, I went to the gym, but I didn't want to go to the gym. Well, I mean, that might be, that might, I translate to, I had the greater desire to go to the gym, but I also had a desire not to go to the gym, but my ultimately my greatest desire won out, even though I had some other desire that said I didn't want to go to the gym. I'm done. <clears throat> Brenda, do you have any closing okay. remarks? Anyway, I have to go get breakfast and then I'm off to the beach. Uh, take care, everyone. See ya. Sorry yeah. if I over talked you, Brenda. All the best. See ya. Yeah, Brenda's still muted. And that discussion about philosophy of 